Hello folks, and today we are talking about Lesson 40A, Higher Degree Polynomial Functions. We're going to uh, be solving higher degree polynomial functions, uh, finding their roots by using factoring. For example number one, we have x cubed minus 3x squared minus 4x plus 12. Well we can see here, if we use factor by parts, that I can factor the same way we have factored previously when we have four terms. The x squared comes out of the first, leaving with x minus 3. Negative 4 coming out of the second, leaving me with x minus 3. The sign changed due to the factoring of the negative. The result being x minus 3. x squared minus 4, of course equal to 0. Now we're mo not done with the factoring as we have to now break up that into x minus 3, x minus 2, x plus 2 equals 0. Throw a t, well it's not more of a double t, x minus 3 is 0, so x is 3, x minus 2 is 0, x is 2 x plus 2 is 0, x is negative 2, giving me the roots of 3, 0, 2, 0, and negative 2, 0. So if this was being graphed, the roots of 3, 0, 2, 0, and negative 2, 0 would be where they intersect the y-axis. The, the x-axis, excuse me, would be where they intersect the x-axis when y equals 0. Second example here, this is a trinomial, but notice that the powers are great. It's not just squared, now I have a 4. So it becomes x to the 4th minus 13x squared plus 36 equals 0. Everyone moved over to the, right, the left-hand side, isolating the 0 over here factor this. Well, this becomes x to the fourth. Two numbers whose product is 36 and add to make negative 13. It'll be negative 4 and negative 3. So let's go minus 4x squared plus negative 9x squared plus 36 equals 0. x squared out of the first. x squared minus 4 remain. The negative 9 coming out of the second x squared minus 4 remaining. So I now have x squared minus 9, x squared minus 4. Both of those put together to give me 0. x minus 3, x plus 3 will be how your x minus your dots breaks down. x minus 2 x plus 2 will be how your second dots breaks down. Throw your t in here. x minus 3 equals 0 means x is 3. x plus 3 is 0 means x is negative 3. x minus 2 is 0 giving me x is 2. x plus 2 is 0 giving me x is negative 2. All four roots being found. So the points are 3, 0, negative 3, 0, 2, 0, and negative 2, 0. Again, if this was graphed, if we were to graph this, we would find these four points are where the graph intersects the x-axis. Looking at example number 3, I now have a code my leading power is 5. Well, I have x to the fifth minus 10x cubed plus 21x. So I'm going to factor an x out, make this x to the fourth minus 10x squared plus 21 equal to 0. Don't lose that x because that's going to be one of our roots. Now when we look here, we want to break apart. What are two numbers whose product is negative, uh, positive 21 and add to make negative 10? Well, that's going to be a negative 3. So I put that here. 
a double parenthesis, plus a negative 7. Of course, all equal to 0. Don't lose that x. This becomes the x squared coming out. x squared minus 3 remain, plus negative 7 coming out. x squared minus 3 remain. And end up with x. This is x squared minus 3. x squared minus 7, all equal to 0. Now, we need to solve these for the x's. So, x, x squared minus 3, x squared minus 7, all equal 0. T chart this up. x equals 0. That's the easy one x squared minus 3 equals 0, or x squared equals 3, or x equals plus or minus radical 3. x squared minus 7 equals 0. x squared equals 7. x squared equals plus or minus radical 7. Notice the power, the, the highest exponent we have is 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 roots. This will have five roots here. Okay? For our roots, for our roots, of course, our points become 0, 0, the origin. Radical 3, 0. Negative radical 3, 0. Radical 7, 0. Negative radical 7, 0. There are your points. As you go forward and work on the extra examples that are provided 4, 5, 6, and 7, please refer back to the video and these notes as needed. Any questions, please bring them to class and I will gladly answer them for you. Thank you.